This video is going to be my review of the Garmin Phoenix 7 Sapphire Solar Edition watch. I'm going to approach this video from the standpoint of a mountain biker who uses the watch for other activities. Now there are a ton of features, a lot of things you can do with this watch that I cannot cover in one video, but I'm going to approach it from my viewpoint, the features, the things that I use the most. I'm going to show the watch up close, the app, also because the app makes this watch even more useful. So let's get into it. The first thing that I'll say is the advantage of using a watch like this over a bike computer if you're a cyclist is flexibility. I use this thing for kayaking, for hiking, for just walking around the neighborhood with my wife. And then I used it on a ski day a few weeks ago and it was super, super handy. So again, it's a wearable that can be a bike computer. And what makes it a really good bike computer is the fact that you can get this mount here and you can make it into a bike computer by taking off the strap. So I'll demonstrate because the straps come off in seconds. So literally it goes from a watch to a bike computer just by undoing this quick release. So you just pull it back, take the straps off, and then it's a bike computer and you just snap it in here and then it will go into any quarter turn Garmin mount just like that. So you've got the tabs on the back really, really useful and just increases the flexibility of the watch. Now, speaking of putting it on the handlebars, you obviously don't need to do that. The reason you would as a mountain biker or road gravel, whatever, is the fact that you may not want it on your wrist bumping around. So I've got this little bone on my wrist because my wrists are super skinny and bony. When I first got the watch, it hit that. It was slightly uncomfortable. After two weeks, I got used to it. No problem at all. The other reason is you may want to have it out in front. So if you're monitoring your speed, you're monitoring maybe a map, your heart rate, maybe you're monitoring your power, then you want to have it out in front of you versus trying to check your wrist. If you're just the kind of person that wants to track your ride, look at your time and distance every once in a while, then you can leave it on your wrist and be just fine, which is really nice because if you're going between bikes and you don't want to you know, switch it, you just leave it on your wrist. Works really well. I'll talk about the model itself. So it is the solar edition of the Phoenix 7, and that means it does literally have a solar panel around the outside of the watch, which you can see up close. Now the solar does not really charge the watch. Now, if you left it out in the sun for three or four hours, it might go up a percent or two, but what it really does is just extend the battery life and it does work really well. So you, you can't like go on a camping trip and expect to put it out in the sun for a couple hours and charge the whole watch. That's not the way it works. The solar just increases the battery life. Now Garmin also makes the Epix, which is pretty much the same watch except a different kind of display. So this one has what Garmin calls a transflective display. It means that you can see it really well in the sun. It's always on. It has a longer battery life than the Epix. The Epix has an AMOLED display. So if you want that, you know, just really bright, crisp AMOLED display, then the Epix would be your watch. I like this one because of how well I can see it in the sun and the fact that the battery lasts longer. Now I'm gonna show the watch up close and I'll tell you the features that I use a lot and that I really like about the watch. This watch is not only a touchscreen, but it also has buttons, which I really like because there are times when you have gloves on, you may not want to smear your screen and using the buttons comes in really handy. And I actually found myself using the buttons more on this watch than the touchscreen. So they're, it's very nice that you have both. So as far as the buttons, this is your light. So I can tap that and you can't really see it on the video here, but the, the backlight comes on in case you're in a dark room, because like I said, this is not AMOLED. This is the transflective display, which uses like, it's kind of like an LCD but it's really bright in the sun, but you do have to touch the light if you want to see it. Another thing that I like about this light is you can double tap the button and it turns into a flashlight and I can go through different modes of the flashlight, uh, red or white, but I use this all the time. So it's really handy. I can double tap again or hit this button on the bottom, which is the back button. So these are your scroll buttons. So I can not only scroll with my fingers, but I can scroll with the buttons. So again, very handy. And then this is your start stop and to get to your activities, which I'll show in a minute. And the start stop button is recessed so you don't accidentally hit it. And then the bottom button is your back button. So to get to your controls, you can hold down this button. And there are 
three main categories of displays that you can have on the Garmin watch. And I say that because when I show the app, I'll explain it. So you've got controls, and I won't really go much into these, but you know, you can just turn around here, like do not disturb, uh, touch on or off, sleep mode, all kind of stuff like that. Go into your settings, hit the back button here. And then you've got activities. And this is like it sounds, activity. So all I'll do here is I just tap that button and I can scroll through activities. You can set these up custom. So I've got mountain bike, gravel, walk, hike, kayak, stand up, paddleboard, navigate, map, trail, fork, cyclocross, all that. And so you can add more. And there's all kind. like I said, there's tons of stuff you can do with this watch. But for purposes of this video, I'm just going to do a highlight. I'm going to hit the back button here. And then finally, you've got glances. So controls activities and then glances and by the way to start an activity so if i want to start a mountain bike ride uh, i would just select mountain bike and then when i'm ready to roll i can hit start stop and it's going so glances are very useful and you've got all kind of things like you can go to your notifications and by the way this is considered a smart watch and you can see your notifications you just can't respond through it so like an apple watch you can text through it you can take calls through it here you can see calls coming in you can hit the answer and then answer it on your phone. But as far as notifications, you, know, you can see your text messages. You just can't reply unless you have an Android phone, then you can do canned responses. Uh, and then you've got, you know, like I've, I've got a calendar. I've got just a whole bunch of information. Uh, and these again are glances, uh, training readiness. So let's talk about that for a second. This is something that I really like. Now, I can see this on the app or I can see it on the watch, but it uses how my sleep has been, how my activities have been, and puts everything together in a training readiness score. And I know if it's up here, you know, 75 is really good. I've seen it as low as one uh, because I trained hard the day before. Maybe I didn't get a good night's sleep. My HRV, which I'll talk about in a minute, is not really good. Uh, so anyway... That uh, is really useful. So these are all of your glances. This is the, uh, a, a default screen. You can add different watch faces. But one thing I like about this is how you can go to various things. So for example, if I wanted to go look at the sunrise, so sunrise here, I can hold down and then it shows me sunrise, sunset. So I can basically go into more information. So I've got a calendar here and I can hold down that on the top left and go to a calendar. So you look at whatever display is here and then this is the weather. So I can hold that down and it shows me the weather. Now I will say one of the only negatives about this watch is a lot of times when I go to the weather, uh, it says waiting for data or something like that. And it happens a lot, like over 50% of the time. So I don't know why. Like I said, the glances, super useful. There's a lot of stuff here, music controls. I can control my music if I wanted to. Now. I don't put music on this watch. You can, but you have to use like Spotify or Deezer. I use YouTube music. Uh, I don't use Apple music. And you couldn't do Apple music or YouTube music on here, but you can control the music if it's playing. Like if YouTube music is playing, I can control it. I just don't put the music on the watch because I don't really separate from the phone. I have the phone with me all the time. And so anyway, uh, heart rate doesn't show because I don't have the watch on. So let me talk about heart rate here for a minute. So the heart rate is very accurate until I get to exercising hard because my wrists are so bony. I guess it just doesn't press hard against my wrists. I haven't really tightened the watch down. If I'm exercising, I will use a heart rate monitor strap. And this watch will pair to pretty much every Garmin sensor out there whether it's a very a radar, it's a heart rate monitor strap, it's a speed sensor, it's a power meter, you can pair it. And that is the advantage of using a watch like this over an Apple watch. So uh, sleep score, this I actually found very useful. I'll show that more in the app, but I get the same data on the watch. It, it gives you a sleep score and it's actually very accurate. Like if my sleep score is high, I actually feel really good that day. So it's kind of like a game. Like I try to make sure I get a high sleep score and it, it actually is useful. It helps me get a good night's sleep and feel good the next day. Something else that I found really useful is I can set up shortcuts. So for example, this button I have set up to hold down and it goes to my stopwatch. I use that all the time. Uh, I have this button set up to where I hold it down and it goes to a timer. 
and I can just change the timer. Now this watch being the Sapphire Solar Edition comes with preloaded maps, which is really nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a walking activity and I'm gonna show you that you have some really high quality detailed maps and that is very useful at times. Now let me talk about maps for a second because you can also put routes on here for navigating. So what I do is I set up the route online and then it's on the phone and then I can very, very easily transfer it from the phone wirelessly to the watch and have a course that's pre-planned that I follow. And even though it's a smaller watch face compared to a bike computer, it's still very easy to get prompts and tell you where to turn. Now it's not as easy to look at a map, but you can definitely put courses on here and follow them. So that is also something that's really cool about this watch. I'll show you the app really quickly in case you're not familiar with it. It's one of the things I love about using Garmin devices. I've got an Edge 840, 830, 1030 plus, the watch. I can bring all of it together in this app and it's got some really, really useful information. So I talked about my sleep score. So I can drill in to like my sleep. I can look at last night's sleep, 740. That's about what I target every night. So that's good. And then it gives me my sleep stages. If I tap on the top on the watch itself up by my picture there, I can go into the settings of the watch. Now I'm not gonna really go through all of these, but there are a ton of things that you can do with this watch. But I, I talked about the activities and apps. So I'm gonna tap on activities and apps, and this is where I can go to uh, you know, add more activities or I can make changes to the activities. Now, one thing that's really nice about this watch is I can change my screens. So I can go to my data screens and I can either change them on the watch or I can change them on the app. I think the app is easier. So again, you can do a lot of setup with the app and then you've got your appearances, which uh, that is the glances that I talked about. So scrolling and I can you know change the, the glances. I can add more, that kind of thing. I can buy some from the store and then the controls that I talked about. So like I said, you've got activities, you've got glances, and you've got controls. You can see I can customize my controls. So just tons of options that you can do with the app. And one thing I like too about the app is if I drill into an activity, so I'm gonna tap on this mountain bike ride that I did today at lunch, and then I can get all kinds of data, especially if I use a heart rate monitor, which I didn't do, or a power meter, which I didn't do on this ride. But I can tap on this little lap icon here and then I can tap on a lap and then if I rotate this the phone sideways I get just a ton of information which I'm not going to do here but uh, again just wanted to give a quick overview of the app to say that it is a very very useful app in my opinion much better than the Apple health app it's just more focused on on athletes on you know people who work out a lot as i mentioned at the beginning of the video i don't just use this for cycling but i also use it for kayaking this is waterproof up to 100 meters so no problems there i'll leave it on the shower i never take this thing off hardly at all uh, i use it for hiking now i mentioned skiing i used this on a ski day at snowbird a couple weeks ago and it was excellent like every time you take the lift up it stops it knows when you're on the lift and then it shows you after that run your max speed how much you descended it was so handy i don't ski very much anymore unfortunately but it's uh it's super handy for skiing so again it's the versatility of this battery life is incredible on this and if you've used an apple watch you will be blown away by the battery you can go probably three weeks without charging it Personally, I charge it about once every week to 10 days because I don't let my devices go below about 30% and I don't let them charge above 80%. That's just me. I don't like to wear down the battery. So I charge it about once a week. But if you went up to 100% and drained it all the way down, you'd probably go three weeks. Uh, the battery life is incredible. And being the solar edition, if you're out in the sun a lot, it's gonna increase the battery life. I'm gonna do another video pretty soon on this watch comparing it to the Apple Watch and talking about what features I like about each one. I'll just give you a spoiler alert. I feel like this thing is just tailor-made for my lifestyle. From the flashlight to all the activities to pairing with my Garmin sensors, this is just for me. Now there are some advantages to an Apple Watch that I'll mention in that upcoming video. So if you're interested in that, make sure you stay tuned to the channel. If you like this video, if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up for me and subscribe if you want more cycling,
bikes, gear, ride, all that kind of stuff around cycling. Uh, I post a lot of those things on my channel. That'll do it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, drop those below. If you've used this, let me know what you think about it, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.